feet of water, just trolling the deep diving crankbait. Nice pre spawn. Large mouth, he was down deep, hit that crankbait. Let's go ahead and let her go. Alright, now let's take a look at this crankbait. Um, fairly small profile. There, go jumping. Deep diving bill that allowed it to get down to well, right now we're in 20 feet, but we were back where I have the waypoint there. We were back in the I don't know 16 17 foot range. So the fish definitely associated with bait fish, even though this isn't a bait fish profile, it did the trick. Let's go get some more. Okay, we're back to where I first saw the bait fish schools. We got a couple fish in there a couple tight to bottom which looks promising um, there's my waypoint right there and I've just been zigzagging across it so these same fish that I believe were shallow this morning I was catching them pretty good on soft plastics on, on brush and wood up close to shore I think midday they're gonna run out deep we got a bright sunlight they don't stay shallow long when they're when they're scouting out. Uh, at least the, I don't think the females stay shallow very long uh, when they're they're getting ready to spawn. Uh, and certainly this deeper basin with one, two, three, four spawning coves at the top of this uh, this reservoir. You know, there's a lot of areas where they would either be staging for pre-spawn, also post-spawn. I think this is going to be a good spot. So I'm glad I dropped that waypoint. Uh, for whatever reason, there's a lot of food there for these fish in, in 17 feet. So I'll keep trolling, just crisscrossing where I marked them. Hopefully uh, get a couple other marks of, of some bait fish schools out there. Let's see what we can find. I'm digging. I can feel it digging on this side. I'm in 18.9 feet. This one's digging. I'm gonna slow down a little bit. I've anchored up on this spot just to prove a point. I got a crankbait with a fairly large bill that should reach the bottom in 16 feet. And I can feel with this rod when it finally does get there. I'm about a third of the way back and it just started digging in. I can feel it banging, banging, banging. Okay, it's underneath me. It's coming up. It's not on the bottom anymore. And if the bottom bouncing presentation is what's getting bit, casting this deep diving crankbait only got me there for, I don't know, maybe 60% of the cast. Now, it may be worth doing it a couple times now that I know the spot's there, but in general, trolling is going to keep you in that, that presentation of grinding the bottom and chiseling away for much longer than casting ever will. I'm learning that I like having one rod in my hand and one that I can look at. And having a good rod, not a not a fiberglass rod, not controlling rods, I do like to have some bend in them, action. And you can do that fairly inexpensively with a fiberglass rod, but instead I'm using these St. Croix rods that are that are high graphite, very sensitive because I'm actually feeling whether I'm chiseling away at gravel or clay or I can definitely feel when I bog down with the, um, with the grass. Besides seeing it here, it's nice to be able to feel and know that all right, your crankbait is functioning properly. Came shallow. 
changed my crankbait to also be shallow. Yep. Nice crankbait, nice uh, crayfish square bill crankbait to match this riprap on this shoreline. I had a deeper diver diving one on this side and this one with a shallower bill. Yeah. Trolling crankbaits. Nice. Yeah. All right. Another nice pre spawn largemouth. We'll let him back into uh, his riprap. So it's just a matter of matching the the depth that you're targeting with the right size bill. Got one out of 17 feet and then got one right here out of maybe six. One thing I'm figuring out pretty quickly just by trolling and zooming around this lake with a deep dive and crankbait is that the grass doesn't grow beyond about 17 feet. So I think once once uh, post spawn patterns kick in, that's really going to be a, a very big pattern. Fishing the outside of the the, the uh, grass bed lane and really just trying to keep those deep diving crankbaits out of the grass. Always checking one or the other, pulling on it to see if I can feel that vibration that's that tells me that crankbait is free of grass. That one actually feels pretty good. You can tell a lot by looking at the tips of the rods in terms of, you know, the, the specific kind of vibration that tells you everything is working as it should. There's something in the language of the line as well. As soon as I get into grass, that vibration da -da 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 just goes raw. Actually, sometimes that's a fish, but if it's, if it's sort of a weak, sort of flat bow, it's grass. A nice one. Oh, yep. They're liking this small crankbait. I get home, I'm gonna have to look at the package and figure out what depth this guy dives to. Actually, when I get home, I'm gonna have to order more because I think I only got one like this. There's that square bill that this one hit. Let's go ahead and let her back in. One other option if you get bored just waiting for a knockdown is just pick up, especially if you're right on a nice bank like this, pick up the rod and just start casting. Cast on one side, troll on the other. Ooh, I got one. snap your rod holder. Although, I don't know, I figure every rod holder has its breaking point. I'm not interested in finding the breaking point of these. So, the drag is set. You know, I can, I can pinch it with two fingers and I can't quite pull it. I wrap it around a finger, it pulls pretty easily. Now, if you are going to cast on one side and troll on the other, you got to realize you're moving in the direction you just cast. So that means that you're going to have to speed up your retrieve. Oh, there we go. A little bit more than you normally would. Oh, well, that's a good one. Yep. Well, it wasn't, this wasn't too fast for this fish. Nope. <laughs>
18 or better, all in the crankbait, most of them trolling. So, certainly an efficient way to cover a lot of ground quickly. The other. So something else that's going on and fishing this this riprap here. The wind's been coming in this direction all day long on a bright sunny day. And I started with water temperatures in the upper 50s this morning. So all that warm water on that riprap bank, it's just piling up there. So any fish that's in there is getting warm and getting fed. Got an illustration here that shows why that particular riprap bank was so good today. Let's take a look. So most of the lake out over deeper water, even up at the surface, we had upper 50s. Um, you did have a warming going on in the upper layer, uh, right up at the surface, because we had all day of bright sun hitting it, but it was fairly thin until you had got to the bank. The reason why, you have the wind pushing it along, just skimming, just like a squeegee, just scraping that whole upper layer across until it hits this bank and it just mushrooms. It just gets really thick. Even, even down deep, you get a, a, a you know warmer temperature. We had upper 60s in this area and upper 50s out over deeper water. So if you have a gentle breeze, not a, you know, not a, 14, 15 mile per hour wind, but like a just a gentle breeze like we had today, enough to get a little bit of a chop lapping up on that bank. You get a nice, you know, deep piling up of water here. So keep that in mind and, uh, you know, look for that to happen each, each springtime. 